our entrance antiphon for St. Thomas Becket on today, the 850th anniversary. He was a great defender of religious freedom and of our Catholic faith. This holy man fought to the death for the law of his God and did not fear the words of the godless, for he was built on solid rock. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. O God, who gave the martyr, St. Thomas Becket, the courage to give up his life for the sake of justice, grant, through his intercession, that, renouncing our life for the sake of Christ in this world, we may find it in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, the way we may be sure that we know Jesus is to keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth not in him. But whoever keeps his word the love of God is truly perfected in him. This is the way we may know that we are in union with him. Whoever claims to abide in him ought to walk just as he walked. Beloved, I am writing no new commandment to you, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard, and yet I do write a new commandment to you which holds true in him and among you, for the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light yet hates his brother is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother remains in the light, and there is nothing in him to cause a fall. Whoever hates his brother is in darkness. He walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. The Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty go before him. Praise and grandeur are in his sanctuary. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. A light of revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people Israel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Lord, now, you let, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The way we may be sure that we know Jesus is to keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. All right, so I'm going to make a confession today. Hopefully it won't be scandalizing in any respect. But in my humanity, there are days in the modern world where I sometimes worry if I'm saying the right things or not. There is the zeitgeist, the culture that we live in, and it's hard to always discern within it what is the Holy Spirit and what is not. And there are such forces imposed upon our church, such secular atheistic influences that have infiltrated the church 
and so many of her followers, even us priests and things, it becomes very hard to know, am I on the right side? Am I on the right side of things? Am I resisting the Holy Spirit and he's doing something so brand new that it seems inconsistent with the past or is there something that I need to be rejecting in the modern world that is not of God, as, as palatable as it may seem, as much as the whole world likes it and wants it, it's not righteous. So then I think in those moments of that challenge to identity, which is of course the devil's most favorite tool is to attack identity, who you are as a Christian. What does it mean to be a Christian? And then we have this beautiful reading from scripture, which is our touchstone from St. John. And I think to myself, all right, I'm a little, I'm not very smart, I get confused, I'm not very holy, but that's why God gave us not only the holy scripture, which doesn't change, but he gave us the gift of living examples in the saints. John says very specifically, it's not about the consolations you have or the graces or what you think of yourself. If you do Jesus' commandments, you pay him the most superb compliment because you are in obedience giving your life over to his word, his plan, his desires for the world. Simple. Well, but what about, and somebody won't like and follow my commandments, do as I asked you. So when I get in these moments of confusion, I'm so grateful as a Catholic Christian church we have the communion of the saints. To look at a Thomas Becket 850 years ago, what was Thomas Becket fighting for? When I look at St. Thomas Aquinas, this great thinker I've always loved since my youth, when I think of St. John of the Cross and specifically St. John Vianney, who's one of my favorite saints, the patron saint of parish priests, I look at his homilies and what he would say. I look at the great doctors of the church, St. Teresa of Avila or St. Therese, a little flower, or the great Pope, St. Leo the Great. When we look at our favorite saints, and not because they're our favorite, but any of the saints are saints because they kept this word. They kept the commandments to the end. And I think to myself, would any of them preach what I'm preaching? Or is my preaching diverging from what they're saying? And if so, I must be very cautious and wary of my own desires to want to fit in the world or to be novel in some ways because the truth that Jesus gives is the only truth that saves and that truth is him. And that means his commandments, his life, and all those who have followed him and are now in heaven are the only examples and the only monitor we have in these rough days to know what is really true and what is really false. So brothers and sisters, I invite you, if you don't know Thomas Beckett, I'm not gonna tell you all about him. You're gonna go do some research yourself today or research on your favorite saints or your name saint or that confirmation saint that you took so long ago. But look to the saints to be the sure rudder and an anchor in these times. They are gifts from God and they are paths that lead us to Jesus who leads us unto the Father. May the Lord be blessed, amen. Our Mass is offered here today at Christ the King are offered for the following intentions. This Mass is offered for the deceased members of the J.H. Pence family, and our afternoon Mass is offered for the deceased members of the Dunlap family. Father, I adore you. Lay my life before you, how I love you. Jesus, I adore you. Lay my life before you, how I love you. Spirit, I adore you. Lay my life before you, how I love you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray, and by your grace may we be set afire with that flame of your love through which St. Thomas Becket overcame every bodily torment through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon. 
Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me, says the Lord. In fellowship with all those who, for whatever reason, may not be able to receive sacramental communion or attend Mass, we pray now the prayer of spiritual communion with them. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin, mother and child. Holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your blessed martyr Thomas Becket faithful in your service and victorious in suffering. Through Christ our Lord, amen. My many thanks to all those who brave the winter wonderland to come to Mass this morning here in church and all of you taking time to watch this Mass at home. Merry Christmas. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.